and the price 50 cents that really tastes good I've given myself a budget of $20 in one day. This is Manila, the Philippines. Welcome to the Philippines. Welcome to Philippines. Welcome, Welcome to the Philippines. I'm trying some popular foods and even getting on a motorbike later on. To start off my day, I hop in this shared ride, which they refer to as a Jeep, even though it's not an actual Jeep. The price, 25 cents. While most tourists come to the Philippines to explore the beaches, today I'm exploring its capital city, Manila. For breakfast, I see this guy selling something and it's called taho, a Filipino tofu snack. And apparently it's a comfort food here. He adds syrup and soy and pearls. Breakfast, 25 cents. That tastes really delicious. Apparently it's like the cereal of the Philippines, the morning breakfast. It actually tastes delicious and it's a great start to my day. Greater Manila has a population of more than 13 million people, which means there are people everywhere. After walking around for a bit and exploring the shops, I head to get on the train. In today's episode, I'll literally be trying every form of transportation you can imagine. So I take the metro and I'm impressed with how clean and efficient it is. Honestly, this beats New York City's metro system. For the price, 50 cents. After riding for a while, I get off after 15 minutes and see this food stand. So today I want to try different things, so I get a mini chicken empanada. The price, 25 cents. Why am I eating a Spanish food here? Well, because Spain colonized the Philippines for hundreds of years, so there is a great influence here in their names, their food, you name it. It tastes okay, nothing great to be honest. After getting off the train, I see a stand selling calamari. She's literally frying it here in her cart on the street. You get five pieces in one cup. And the price? 50 cents. That really tastes good. Okay, in most cities, I have a hard time sticking to my budget, but here in Manila, I'm starting to realize I might actually have a hard time spending $20. Next, it's time for another form of transportation, so I take an e-bike and ride it for a while. The price is 25 cents. I arrive to their version of Chinatown. This kind of feels like a cool outdoor Chinese-inspired mall. The vibes are great, but I already know the prices here are not going to be as cheap as what I've been paying so far today. By the way, this country has more than 110 10 million people living here, making it the 13th most populous country in the world. So even though today I'm exploring Manila, people in the Philippines live on more than 2,000 different islands. So for lunch, I find this food stand selling dumplings. I get the pork dumplings and noodles. The price? Three dollars. It's pretty good and quite filling. Overall, I love the vibes of this place. I also try this fried chip stand, but get this, the price is two dollars. Okay, that's still cheap compared to America, but I've already already gotten used to cheaper prices, so the $2 totally catches me off guard. I also don't even like these chips, they're too fried. After Chinatown, I get on an electric tricycle and ride it for 15 minutes. The price is 50 cents. I arrive at a famous historical site in Manila and start by walking around this square and church. It's really nice and it's good to be in a place that's a bit less chaotic than what I've seen so far today. I see these horse carriages taking tourists around. The price is $5, but I decide against it. Next Next, I arrive here. This is called the Historical Intramuros. The price to enter is $1.50. And it's the same price for tourists and locals, which to be honest, in some countries, they will have two different prices, making it cheaper for locals and more expensive for tourists. So I'm pretty happy about that. This is one of the oldest districts in Manila, built more than 450 years ago by the Spaniards. It has high walls and a moat around it. I learn about the history of the Philippines, and then I go into the underground tunnel. They have a deep history behind why, and here they've depicted when Filipinos were taken prisoners by the Japanese. It's a very interesting experience to walk through these, and I learned a lot. Next, it's time for a break from all the walking, so I sit down to enjoy a Filipino classic dessert. This is called Halo Halo. The price is $2. Technically, it means mix mix, and it's made up of crushed ice, evaporated milk, corn, coconut strips, taro, flan, fruit preservatives, you name it. It's honestly a very festive festive dessert because you keep finding new flavors while you're eating. Yes, this is a touristy area, so the dessert is more money than you would usually pay in other parts of Manila. That ice cream was really good, definitely a little heavy and definitely a bit sweet, 
but it was really interesting to see all those different ingredients in one cup. Afterwards, I see this wedding, which is so cool to see. Next, I take a UV van ride for a while. The price of this ride is 50 cents. I arrive at Mall of Asia. This is the largest mall in the Philippines, but I'm not here to go to malls, so I walk through it pretty quickly and cross a bridge into Manila Bay. Manila Bay is a very famous area for people to sit and enjoy the water, and they also have rides and games. The price? Free. I absolutely love it because the vibes are really nice around sunset. Now that the sun is setting, the weather is actually really beautiful. You don't have to worry about it being too hot and humid. Um, and there's no direct sunlight in my face. So this is absolutely a beautiful time to be outside and enjoy Manila Bay. Even though I feel like I have eaten a lot today, it's seven o'clock, it's time for dinner. Let's go find some food. Then I head back to the mall area to have dinner. This restaurant is called Mang in Asal and they are famous for their chicken. I get a chicken with rice and noodles and the tea. The price? $4, and that includes a local iced tea. The food is really tasty, and apparently this restaurant is very popular for Filipinos. People here in the Philippines in general are so friendly. But I can't believe I still have money left, and even though I'm full, I take it as a sign to go next door for more dessert. Jollibee is a famous fast food Filipino restaurant that has even opened up around the world, including in the United States. I would love to try their famous mango or peach pie, but they're sold out. So even though the most famous one is the peach mango pie they're out of it so i ended up having to get the chocolate nello pie it doesn't sound very good but let's give it a try the price one dollar i like the chocolate part but i hate the marshmallow part you can definitely taste the marshmallow in here and the chocolate is very heavy and it's a little bit dense and now i'm so so full to end the day i'm gonna take this a motorbike through out manila i order a motorbike because come on that's the one method of transportation i have not yet taken the price of the motorbike to my hotel cost me one dollar fifty cents and with the rest of my budget i decide let me tip the driver and he seems very happy about it this is my first challenge i've done where i came in below my budget and let me tell you what a good feeling if you're looking for for a unique trip and you're on a budget, definitely consider the Philippines, especially since from Manila, you can actually go to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Overall, this was actually a really fun day. I wasn't sure what to expect because Manila is a very crowded and chaotic city. And most people will skip Manila, I find. Most people will just go to some islands or beach resorts, and that's great, and I'm gonna do that as well. But I was genuinely curious to explore Manila and see it from kind of hopefully a local's perspective, and also see how expensive or how cheap it would be. And to my surprise, it was actually very inexpensive. It was almost hard to spend the $20 a day here in Manila. But of course, that's me as a tourist. For millions of people who live here, it's a different story because wages are quite low and costs of living are relatively expensive for their wages. So I'm making more videos about that that you can go and check out to understand the economics of the Philippines and more. As for the highlights of my day, I would say definitely that dinner was really good. I also liked going to Manila Bay. Apparently they've cleaned it up a lot. Um, and I really just love the energy and the vibe of that place. Everyone was just really relaxed. Everyone is really happy and seem to be really enjoying themselves. And that sunset was actually quite beautiful. Even though, again, Manila is very chaotic and crowded, I think that what made it so special to me was the people. The people are so warm and friendly. Anytime I had a camera in someone's face, they immediately start smiling and waving and asking, what's my name, asking where I'm from. And it's really cool. To be honest, I can't think of a country that's quite so open and outgoing and just warm and friendly and they just love being filmed on camera they love connecting with people they love getting to know people and it really is a testament to the people of the philippines um, that their culture makes them so warm and so friendly and i love that it was also cool to take so many different modes of transportation to get around that was unique for me everything from the motorbike to the tuk-tuk to the train the bus i will say the motorbike ride at the end of the night was my favorite because it was so exhilarating, especially at night. I love doing something like that in like Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. Um, and now I got to ride a motorbike here in Philippines. But I want to know, what do you think? What did I miss here in Manila? Let me know in the comments. While you're at it, check out more of my cash challenges like $20 day in Vietnam or $100 day in Paris. And don't forget to follow my page and I'll see you soon.